I'm here to talk about the future and how artificial intelligence may impact all of our work. So as I look around, I see a room full of intelligent humans. I know that you're intelligent. I assume that you're human. So if you, if you look at your neighbor next to you, it's probably pretty easy to tell that they are, in fact, a human. And if you're unsure, just have a conversation with them, and a very simple Turing test will determine whether or not they're artificial. So I am an organic, free-range human, and I believe that the future of intelligence isn't artificial. It is human. I'd like to talk about human intelligence. So human intelligence has built everything we love in our society, everything in civilization today, including artificial intelligence. Now we're embarking on an opportunity to combine human intelligence with these tools that we're creating that get smarter. And, and what can we do with those? Can we eradicate poverty and disease? Yes, please. Would we create autonomous weaponry that eradicates humanity? No, thank you. It's our responsibility to use this new technology for the benefit of humanity. So a quick quote about human intelligence, amplifying our human intelligence, what I call HI, with artificial intelligence has the potential of helping civilization flourish like never before, so long as we manage to keep the technology beneficial. So AI is uh, commonly thought of as bots or robots today. It's, it's very often mistaken. Machine learning is technology that is capable of getting smarter on its own. It learns and it can potentially do more than the human that programmed it. So you're familiar with today's AI. This is weak AI. You use Google and you've been in the search algorithms. You know that Facebook's image recognition can see your photos. Uh, we play chess with computers. But the future of AI is what is going to be called general AI or AGI. And that AI will outperform humans at nearly every cognitive task. So if you think about that, that means that a robot will eventually take your job. Now, futurists are saying that in 2030, this is what the future of work looks like. <clears throat> On the red bars, these are the jobs that are at the most risk or at threat today for having computer capital take them over. In America, it's 47%, India, 69% and a staggering 85% in Ethiopia, the poorer countries have a higher risk of their human jobs being taken over. So the World Economic Forum says that in 2020, that looks like something like 5 million jobs, and by 2030, that's 30% of all global jobs. There are many companies that are already doing this today. Of the top 10 largest employers in the world, Foxconn, who you may not know by name, but you do know that they are a manufacturer for some companies you may use, Amazon, Google, Apple, um, just replaced 60,000 workers human workers with robots, and Walmart and the US Department of Defense are using drones as replacements. These are all the largest fleets of unmanned drones today. So we're kind of going autonomous with everything. Food, cars, uh, I've recently gotten the opportunity to, to drive in the Kama car, the Kama.ai AI car, which is the, uh, the, the car that at the end of the year will be available to retrofit in any car for $1,000. And so it's becoming more accessible. Everything, even professions that we didn't think would be able to be autonomous are, like being a legal clerk. So if machines are taking our jobs, does that mean that it's machine earning? Uh, what happens? Think about your autonomous car driven by Uber, owned by Uber. There's no human inside, and they, uh, they pick you up, and they take the fee, and then they go to the autonomous gas station, and they fuel up on gas, and they pay that gas station, and no human is involved. That's a very far future, but maybe a sooner future is that a robot may be your next coworker. So humanoids are kind of the way that we think about the robots that are the most like humans. We've created them in our image, which is odd because humans are fundamentally flawed, and it makes it easier to integrate them into the workplace. Now, humans will be able to work side by side with humanoids, and it's already happening today. I'd like to show you a video from Boston Dynamics. And this is a factory worker. Now, the way that these robots learn is just like a child. They have deep learning, 
So they'll complete a task over and over again until they get it right. They take a couple seconds to think about the task at hand so that they can rewire and rethink about it again. Now, they have a very high threshold for failure. In fact, nearly zero threshold, uh, unless you break them. They will continue to repeat the task until it's done. So these are what we are looking at implemented today. Now, don't worry, this robot is in training. And so long as this parts work, he'll always get back up. Now, I think his feelings were hurt a little bit. So when you saw that man push down the robot, did you feel bad for him? Like, it kind of hurts, right? He skinned a knee, maybe he's broken. We project our human empathy onto the machines that we're creating, which may be a little bit dangerous. This is Ava, she's from Ex Machina, a movie about AI, which shows you the real Turing test. Now, at the point at which your neighbor sitting next to you, who may be an AI planted in the audience, is unable to be determined between a human and and a machine, you're going to want to ensure that they know empathy and that we've really programmed that in. Now, that was uh, something that's kind of like the, the modern day Terminator and it invokes a lot of fear, as Hollywood generally does, into people about AI. The Economist does as well. And here are a few other people who are also warning us about the dangers. Elon Musk says it's like the next nuclear weapon. And Stephen Hawking and Bill Gates both say that it's the most dangerous thing that we've ever created and we must use it responsibly. Even the United Nations has issued a warning that if we build autonomous weapons, we will be building killer robots. This is a campaign to stop killer robots that was put forth by the United Nations and about 50 NGOs. And this really is truly a preventative measure to say we must be building AI responsibly. Let us not build autonomous weapons. Now, building AI, there are only two ways in which it can be very dangerous. One is if we program it that way. So that means that we specifically told the AI that it needs to kill, and that would be autonomous weaponry. And the second is if we program them too well. So if they want to do something for the benefit of us, so let's say that you get into your car, your autonomous driving car, and you say, I need to get to the airport as fast as possible. Go. And so in order to obey you, it breaks all the other rules. And now you're being chased by a helicopter and you're throwing up over the back seat and you know, you've gone through a bunch of barriers and you've knocked down a couple of people and you got to the airport as fast as possible because that's what the AI thought it needed to do. So we have to be a little bit careful. I believe that we can create more than we can destroy. So the bad version is that all of the jobs get killed faster than we create new ones, but I like the good version. The good version is that we enable everyone to leave the jobs that are repetitive tasks and tedious things behind and empower ourselves to change the world, stop climate change, for instance, eradicate disease, or empower all of the people, the four billion of us who are today not connected to the world yet. So there's an opportunity here. Every single one of these robots, in order to be a good actor, needs to have a manager, a maintenance person, Someone behind the steering wheel or the remote control. This is great, we can sit back. So a robot will eventually take your job. Yes, let the robot take those jobs and let's move on to higher purpose. So the real question to pose to society today is if machines are capable of doing almost any work that humans do, what will humans do? So I'd like to propose that we flip AI around and that we take artificial intelligence as a tool and we use intelligence amp amplification. Let's take IA to make human intelligence better. We can leverage the tools that we're creating to make ourselves better. So here is what I propose. This is a very complicated Venn diagram explaining what I think would be the way to go about what happens when you lose your job to an AI. Find the thing you love to do, that you're good at doing, that you get, can get paid to do, and society benefits. Now that's a lot to do in one. 
if you see some of them overlapping, like the thing that you love to do and the thing that you're good at doing, it might not be the thing that earns you money or that helps society. You should still do that anyway. But right in the center is this sweet spot of life purpose. And I'd like to share my life purpose with you. I discovered my life purpose is to help enable humans have better lives through technology. And in order to do that, I want to put forth a motion. We have a movement of super intelligent humans before making super intelligent computers. And it's really simple, and I know every single one of you today here in this audience can be a part of the super intelligent hum human movement. So it just takes three things. One is that you commit to being emotionally intelligent. When you have empathy, have empathy for humans. And it's okay to have empathy for robots too, but just remember that they're machines. And number two is follow your life purpose. Keep doing the thing that you get paid to do that society benefits from because that is beneficial to society until we do have a legitimately good way to replace that job. Really, truly follow your life purpose. And the third way is be a good human. Simply be a good human to other humans because AI will be watching and will be learning from us. So simply do more of what makes you human. And if all else fails, we have the singularity. Thank you.